So as I was trying to uh, get the guys over at Facebook to come and talk to you, I, I ran into probably four or five different people that I know there, and uh, I kept asking them to come and bring examples of how the legal industry has embraced Facebook. And they all kind of ran away. And I didn't quite know what we were going to do because it's actually very different. Doing social media with Facebook, with Twitter, when you're dealing with the legal industry is very different from almost everything else. And, and we've often talked about how this should be hard, um, you can just get involved, but when you're dealing with something social and when you're dealing with something legal, you actually have to be fairly creative about the way you go about doing it. So I'm sitting at an event in Atlanta and uh, there's a speaker talking about a campaign that she did for Facebook. And I said, Cindy, you need, we need you to come to Orlando. Um, so what you're going to see here today is uh, the, a very creative and appropriate way that, that Cindy is helping clients use Facebook social media to connect with consumers for the legal industry. And I, I really fear that this, this process and this perspective of how it needs to be different for legal is missing. And it was until I, I, I saw Cindy speak that it, the light bulb clicked for me, and I, and I hope it does for all of you as well. So please welcome uh, Cindy Speaker. I work with attorneys across the country. I started out as a marketing director for a Philadelphia law firm. We were in Philadelphia, New York, and Washington. And, and I moved into my own business. And what I found is that as, as we've gotten into social media and, and online video and things like that, and I start talking to attorneys, they always say one thing, and you probably know that question. How's it going to bring me cases? And, every, and that's a legitimate question. How's it going to bring me cases? But, but I think that sometimes what happens is attorneys don't quite understand social media and therefore they don't embrace it and leverage it for its amazing potential. So I actually created this short little video, it's just two minutes, and it kind of, under, it kind of explains why, uh, you know, I'm just on the right place here, it explains this concept of social media and, and what's different about it, what you need to understand in order to make it work for you. In June of 2010, Columbia Pictures distributed a feature film, The Karate Kid, that had cost just $40 million to make. It quickly became a sleeper hit, which means it was kind of like the little engine that could. Nobody ever expected it to reach the mammoth gross revenue it did, over $359 million. The return, almost nine to one. What drove the success, and why would that matter to you, an attorney? Because success leaves clues. If you're like many attorneys, you would be rather pleased with a nine to one return. Yet some of you are still settling for a two to one return from your yellow page ads. Why? Because it's what you've always done, and because you are much more content to pay to play than to participate to play. There was another sleeper hit in 2010. It was social media. And with its emergence came a mind shift. The shift from impressions to connections, from campaigns to conversations, from outbound marketing to inbound marketing, from hunting to fishing. The currency of traditional mass media marketing, like Yellow Pages and TV, is money while the currency of social media marketing is great content. Oh, and there are ground rules to social media. The biggest ground rule is be authentic and genuine. Give value first and do so without any expectation of a return. I work with attorneys throughout the country and I know what your big question is. Will it bring me cases? That's kind of like saying, no more theory please, just show me the money. The fact is, you'll only see the money once you understand and embrace the mind shift. When you do that, you will be positioned for exponential growth because social media is scalable word of mouth. Some have called it word of mouth on steroids. You see, it's still all about relationships and it always will be. Social media and technology just accelerate the pace at which those relationships can be cultivated and then facilitate the logistics of viral and exponential growth. 
The real power of social media marketing is to authentically architect an integrated plan whereby you give consumers a platform to be heard, to connect with each other, and to connect with your brand. And if you do that, you have the potential to turn your brand into a sleeper hit in 2011. Okay. Now, something else interesting you might want to know is everything I tell you today, I want you to understand that you can do these things yourself. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to give you all the tools and all the tips, the things that we use every day. If I thought every one of you would go back and use them, I probably wouldn't give them out because I don't want a lot more competition. But I know that probably most people won't. <laughs> Nevertheless, some of you will. And for those that will, I can tell you that the systems and the tools I'm going to share with you today, we're using every day for law firms across the country, and they work really well. One thing I want to tell you about that little video, I, uh, and this is a Facebook story. We're talking about Facebook today. I have a nephew, and he's in high school. And he has a friend in high school, and I kept seeing these little student films on Facebook, and they were fantastic. And so I said to my nephew, Zach, I said, Zach, does that kid want a job? I said, he's great. And the kid saw the post. He was working as a bagger at a grocery store. And so he's now working for me. He did that video completely on his own. All right? All I did is gave him a voiceover, and I said, run with it. Don't you think that's pretty good for 16? Okay, so what we don't tap into is all those young people out there that have all these skills that a lot of us don't have, or we don't have as well as them, but the kid, and I don't know if any of you are video techs, but the kid taught himself After Effects, which is a Hollywood industry standard software program. And so, just to let you know, everything I tell you today, I'm going to tell you all the tools, you can do it yourself. All right? What I want you to understand about social media is social media is an audience with audiences. And that is huge for you. And there is so much potential for you because when you impact your audience on social media, they have their own audience. And that's what can lead to this exponential growth. Conrad talked about this case study that I did. So here's, here's what happened. Uh, we did a case study. We did something on Facebook. And again, it was for engagement. What I want you to understand about attorneys, and Conrad alluded to this, is you, know, you can't do all the same things that other, other businesses can do. For instance, if you're a DUI attorney, uh, you can't expect that people are going to check in at your place on Foursquare. Any of you do Foursquare? If you don't do Foursquare, I encourage you to get involved in Foursquare. It's, it's, it's location-based social media and there's value to it, even if you are a DUI attorney. Here's why. Because it will it'll give you a bump on Google. And when somebody looks for you on Google, I can tell you right now, there's a good chance your Foursquare site will show up, just like your Google Places sites and others. So even though it's very unlikely that anybody's going to check in to, to your firm on Foursquare, there's still value in doing it. But here's other things. When you're an attorney, and a lot of my attorneys, for the most part, are personal injury attorneys, what I find is, what I look for is I look for relevant topics where we can support causes, where we can give value, where we can support the community. And one of those was our distracted driving campaign. Um, I told my guys, listen, I want to do a distracted driving campaign. And I want to do a drunk driving and a bus driving campaign because those are campaigns that show they give value to the community. We can raise awareness about the dangers of distracted driving, the dangers of drunk driving, the dangers of bus driving. We're doing a good thing for a community, and I can tell you that because Facebook is so relational, people get involved in that. We started that, I think in February, we ran our first campaign. And we've been running those campaigns ever since. And I'm going to show you some actual results to show you the kind of engagement that is occurring. But first of all, I don't mind my videos, but we do a lot of video in my company. And so I'm going to show you a video of one of my attorneys in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. His name's David Daggett. He was the first one we did this, this program with. And so I asked him to talk a little bit about the case results, and he's going to do that in this video. Hello, my name is David Daggett. I'm an attorney with Daggett Shuler Attorneys in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. I want to tell you about a campaign we recently ran at our office with the help of Cindy Speaker. As we all know, distracted driving is an e increasing threat and harm on our roadways. And one of the things that we really need to do is provide information through communication to our friends in the public 
regarding the dangers of distracted driving. So here's what Cindy did. She put together this incredible uh, distracted driving infomercial. I'll call it an infomercial. It's, it's 30 or 40 seconds or so, that we were able to distribute through social media outlets, namely Facebook. And what Cindy did is she made a contest out of it where the winner of the contest would get a customized flip video camera from our law firm. So, uh, and all the people had to do was to promise that they would watch the video and send it along to at least one other person. Now, this grew a little bit exponentially. First, on our Facebook page, we added about 400 or so fans, or likes as they now call them, uh, but also on YouTube, Cindy was able to track how the YouTube video was then passed along to other people which extrapolates into hundreds and even thousands of views. What does this do for you and for your law firm? Well, what it does is it engages your clientele, spreads the message that we're concerned about the public and concerned uh, for the public's safety, and it engages a relationship and an, op and an opportunity for ongoing communication. Uh, this is Cindy's expertise. She does a great job of it. Uh, thank you, Cindy. You've been a longtime friend, and I appreciate your help. Here's what I want you to understand about that. First of all, you might want to write this down. The interface that we used to facilitate running this campaign, and, and, and the terms of service for Facebook say that you must use a third party. Um, there may be some ways to get around it, but basically you need to use a third party application in order to run a sweepstakes or a, face, or a campaign on Facebook. The one that we chose is called Wildfire App. And I researched a lot of them, I think it's the best one out there. Now I'm gonna show you a campaign that's running right now. This is the safety lawyer. Um, I have an attorney in, in Georgia. He does a lot of things with safety. He actually has something called Keep Georgia Safe. Um, as a matter of fact, he's worked with Elizabeth, Elizabeth Smart's father um, in, in those things. And it's a very authentic, um, interest in keeping Georgia safe. Well, we decided to brand him as the safety lawyer. So we set this up last week and we set up the Facebook and had kind of an integrated campaign. Another thing you're going to hear me talk about is what you need, need to what you need to do need, it, it needs to be integrated. And so you can't take a stab here and a stab there. You want to have an integrated approach. So with the safety lawyer, what you'll see here is you can see if you can see this over on the wall, you'll see that something says win a Codex IA camera. Now, with Facebook, what you can do is if you go into your settings, you can define your default tab. You want to define your default tab as your landing page. And this, right now, it's defined as this one in Codex I8. You may have a welcome page or whatever. But people that come to your page for the first time, you want to drive them to a landing page, not your wall. Once they're already your friends, then you can drive them to the wall. So this is the campaign. If you go to his page, The Safety Lawyer, on Facebook, you'll see that, first of all, we have a banner here that says, click here to see the video. If you click through it, we go right to his YouTube channel, which actually I'll just show you that. So it goes directly to his YouTube channel. Oop, back up here. All right, and you can see that this video has had 537 views, and it was, I think, less, let's see, was it a week ago? Yeah, it was, it was May 10th, so that's more than a week ago, but not much more. Um, all right, so then what happens is you come down, and you see that it talks about distracted driving is driving blind. Well, you can come in here and you can enter the sweepstakes. Now, obviously, we are using the carrot, and, um, and that is that we're giving away a code XI8, and that does drive people to participate. However, a lot of people participate authentically because they care about distracted driving, and when they see the video, they care about sharing that, and I've had a lot of comments on Facebook in the various campaigns because people do care about this topic. They have kids out there having accidents and things like this, and they care about distracted driving. So when they enter the sweepstakes, 
What happens is you're also building a mailing list, which is pretty cool. For the most part, Facebook, we've had, um, Facebook, we've, we've, for the most part, built those pages to three to 500 in a three-week campaign, all right? And you can see in this one, it started at 445, it went to 906. YouTube has shown exponential growth, and that's where the video is actually posted. All right, so for this one, and this is actually another firm, this is, um, this is the Hughes and Coleman form, firm, right? Because they just did theirs recently. So they started out, you can see on one side, it says they started their, when, I, when they first went to their YouTube channel, which we actually put, you know, <coughs> spruced it up a little, put some custom graphics on, set up the, the playlist, right, and things like that. They had eight friends and 11 subscribers. At the end of the three-week campaign, they had 1,913 friends, they had 80 subscribers, and that video had 1,418 views, 10 comments, and 20 likes. That equals engagement. And that's what you really want to do. Is, as, you, as David said, you want to, there's return on engagement. It's a very valuable thing here. Now, it just so happens that about a month ago, we found out we won a Telly Award for that video under social responsibility. So that's kind of an angle. I shouldn't say an angle because I really am all about authenticity. However, I think this campaign lends itself to press. And, and so there's two aspects of that. Number one, it lends itself to press because number one, it, you're doing a good thing in the community. Number two, it's an award-winning spot. What, happen is, it, what happens is for the firm, then we'll rebrand it for the firm. So it's their spot, we're not part of that. So I want you to understand that social media can be leveraged if you use it in an integrated manner, can be leveraged for huge um, potential. And so if you look at this distracted driving campaign, this is one, this is uh, one campaign that ended last week. On that sweepstakes page that I showed you, okay, during that three-week campaign, they had 1,042 people visit that page, the sweepstakes campaign page. 616 of them entered. All right, that means we now have a nice little email list of 616 people that opted in because they were interested in the distracted driving campaign. And that entry rate converted at 59%. In addition, we had 1,418 views on YouTube. <laughs> Friends acquired on YouTube were 1,913. Facebook doubled. They added 400 million likes. Does that say 480, 460? I can't quite see my small print there. And the visits to the Facebook sweepstakes page, as we said, was 1,042, conversion 59%. All right, what, what I want you to understand is that social media right now even though uh, a lot, even though uh, almost everybody now has a, a Facebook page and they probably have a YouTube channel and things like that. But in, in my travels, what I'm seeing is very few law firms and attorneys are even coming close to leveraging the power of social media. And so what I wanted to do, in addition to talking about Facebook and giving you a specific example, and let me give you the tools that you use for that campaign. You create a social media page. It's free. Create a YouTube page, uh, I'm sorry, a Facebook page. Go to Wildfire app, all right? You can create that sweepstakes right there. Now, if you, have, if you don't have a graphic designer that can easily create these graphics for you, you can go to a place like elance.com, guru.com, all right? And you can, you can post a job in there, which they will do, 99 designs is another one. And you can probably get those graphics done for under 100 bucks, maybe $75, all right? And then you can run that campaign yourself. But here's the next thing I want to talk to you about. Social media needs to be an integrated campaign. And you'll notice that in that Facebook campaign that I just showed you, Facebook drove traffic to YouTube, built an email list. We then contacted them by email. All right, and so there's an integration. And for you, if you're trying to figure out where do I start with a social media campaign, you're going to see a slide in a minute. I'm going to tell you that I believe Facebook, and I think we're all on the same page with this, Facebook is the epicenter right now. It might not be next month, but it is today, all right? And so you, you need to have a Facebook page, and it needs to be professionally created. Get some professional graphics. You want to have a, a professional appearance. You need to have a YouTube channel, all right? You need to have a content creation plan. If there's one term that you need to get in your mind about social media, it's authenticity. Because everything you do, if it's authentic, then, then you're, on, you're on the right page. But if you're trying to find a way to game the system or do some of the things that, that will get you high in the search engine rankings, but they really are just kind of all mechanical, that's not the kind of things that build a brand. 
And so remember this, that the vast majority of people when they go, when they consider your services, they, they are going to want to confirm you on the internet. Now Vanessa Fox was outstanding. I hope you all heard her this morning. She was just tremendous. She talked about search, and I thought it was a fabulous presentation. This, what I'm going to talk to, to you about here with social media, search is very relevant, but also what I want you to understand is once people search and they have a couple selections, they're going to confirm you in social media. So your social media can really help to elevate your brand. It can create the top of mind awareness that every firm needs, and it can elevate your brand. So you, you have your Facebook, you have your YouTube, you need a content creation plan. I can tell you that my company, what we do is we mostly create video content. And here's the reason. First of all, video is kind of my thing, and that 16-year-old is so good. But um, we do have, I have some other editors and producers as well. But we, um, video is, I think it's, it's great. And here's what happens with video. After we create the video, we will transcribe it. And we have the article, we have the blog post, we have the podcast, we have the status post. And so if you create it as the video, you can really multipurpose it many different ways. So that's kind of my thing. If you're a writer, then you know, that may be the way you go. But you need a plan because this needs to be done with some consistency. And when you create your content, you need to be creating content consistently. The next thing is it's not enough to create it and put it on Facebook and YouTube. That is not enough. You need to have a content distribution plan. I'm going to tell you my number one secret, hoping that not many of you are going to take me up on subscribing to this. But honestly, it is, I would say, the biggest advantage, the, not advantage, the best tool that I have in my arsenal right now. Okay? It's a program called Traffic Geyser. How many of you have heard of Traffic Geyser? Okay. Some, some, okay. Traffic Geyser is a phenomenal program. Mike Keenings, I think, is brilliant. Mike, I was in Mike Keenings' mastermind group for a while. Mike Keenings is the guy that set up video for Tony Robbins. He's also the social media coach to Paula Abdul, and he's the mastermind behind the creation of Traffic Geyser. So here's how it works. Traffic Geyser is a, 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 an interface. It's a portal. And what you do, for instance, suppose we create a video. Um, you know what, let me, well, I don't want to get too distracted, I'll show you later. If you create a video and you want to get it out through the distribution system, sure you want it on YouTube and you want it on Facebook, right? But you want it in other places too. If you upload it through Traffic Geyser, what happens is you'll set up a profile, and when you prepare it, you tag it, you keyword it, you write your descriptions, you, you set it in the right categories, you distribute it, it doesn't go to just YouTube and Facebook, it goes to about 75 places. And I can tell you that with my attorneys, here's what I typically say. And you're going to see an example of one that I just did yesterday. Um, is if you put it out through the system, usually you'll get high rankings. Um, and so when that happens, more often than not, I see those rankings from places like um, Daily Motion, Rever, uh, Cuego, not necessarily YouTube. Everybody's on YouTube, but there aren't many people on Daily Motion, and there aren't many people on Rever. Well, there are, but not many attorneys, because most of them aren't doing this stuff. And so if you do this kind of stuff, you're really going to set yourself apart. And so when I show you an example in a few minutes, you're going to see an attorney, I put his video up yesterday, and it's, it, you know, right now it's ranking, and I think it's his Daily Motion video. All right, but let's keep going on this with our seven-step integrated plan. The next thing is try building cross-platform. And you saw that in using the Facebook sweepstakes that we did some try building because we built that email list of over 600. Well, that's a great email list. Now, I can tell you right now that what will happen, we live in a global world. And so you're not going to get all your people in your community. That's not going to happen. I had somebody last week, a marketing director, and I thought she was so wise because she got our list and there were a lot of people that were not in her town, but she said to her marketing director, and she copied me on all the communications, she said, this is a great list to use for our mass torch work. Okay, and you know, whatever the work is, building a list is a good thing. Because when you have people that, when, when they start doing, liking your page or whatever on Facebook, there's a great chance that their uh, Uncle Joe or their Grandma Susan in another state, and having them like your firm is a good thing. All right, so even though it's not in your town, it's still valuable. Mobile plan, and maybe another presentation that we can't go into mobile today, but mobile is, is emerging. And I'll tell you a place where you can really start with mobile. 
And that is with 2D barcodes. How many of you know about 2D barcodes? All right, not a lot. Now listen, 2D barcodes, if you go to a place like ScanLife, all right, ScanLife is a good place to create 2D barcodes. And what that is, you're familiar with barcodes when you go to the grocery store. If you create a 2D barcode, what you can do is you can set it up. What's that? The two. Yeah, it's actually two, the letter D, and then barcode. Scan life is an example. Most of you probably have smartphones in the work in the room. And if you go on your smartphone, you will find apps for 2D barcodes. Yes? Is that the name of QR code? Yes, it is. Okay. That's okay. thank you. That's exactly right. QR codes. And so, for instance, okay, I just we just did a book with one of my attorneys. Um, and, and it just went to, to print, and on the back of it, we put a 2D barcode. Now, it's a book about minor motorcycle safety. On the back of that book is a 2D barcode. For somebody that's going to know what that 2D barcode is, they simply hold their, they open the app on their smartphone, they hover over the 2D barcode, and it sends them someplace. And so for my attorney, it sends that person to a playlist with about 15 videos about motorcycle insurance and motorcycle safety and all these kinds of things. All right? It's free. Very simple to do. Here's what I want to say to you. So far, 2D barcodes are not mainstream. You can see a lot of people don't know about 2D bar barcodes, QR codes. But here's my contention. I think that if you're the one that introduces them to a new technology, I think that makes you memorable. So even though your clients aren't really using them yet, they're going to wonder what they are. And I think that gives you a chance, once again, to stand out. You know, somebody has said, I've heard this many times, is a lot of times, instead of competing with um, the group. If you can create a new category where you stand out, you can get to number one a lot faster. We all know the advantage of being number one. So if you become, like for us, technology is really our thing. And so if you stand out in technology in your firm just by introducing them to things like this, that makes you stand out and it makes you different. And the fact is almost all the tools are free. Now if you want to create a mobile website, again, very inexpensively, there's a great little program called Mobi Site Galore. And you can create a mobile website for about $25. It's a template, $25 a month. It's a templated site. So you go in, it'll say, add your URL, add your paragraph about a, you know, your about page, add this, add that. And so for like $25 a month, you get a great little mobile website. Do many people have mobile websites? Not all that many. Does it set you apart? I think it does. And so if you create a landing page, which you can do in that site, and you go to an event, Right? And you drive them to the landing page on their smartphones. Are you setting yourself apart? I think so. What yes. Moby Site Galore. G A L O R E. Moby Site Galore. That's, you can create mobile websites there. At one point, I had a, um, just to give you an idea of how inexpensive this is, I had a, uh, a plan where it had 25 accounts going and it cost me $98 a month. It's very inexpensive. Um, but I think you can just do a single account for about 25 bucks. Yes? With that. Would it be better to do the mobile site within your own site versus going to Mobi site to Lord? I think that, yes, I, I do think that the mobile site, because a lot of people um, will do the M dot and then they have their website, so it's, I think that's better. I do think that's better. However, one of the things that appeals to me about social media is you can move extremely quickly. And so suppose you're going to an event. All right, this, I'll tell you an idea I had here. This is, this is, I'll, I'll share this idea with you because I'm going to do this next week. I'm going to Indiana to meet with a, with a firm. Um, you know, when you edit and you, and you do all this, it takes a lot of time. But here's something. Here's a project. If you wanted to test it with me, and if you do, write to me. And, you know, and, I'll, and we'll tweak it together. But here's, okay, I'm going to this firm in Indiana next week, right? So there's going to be a motorcycle event. Now, I can, I can gather all that footage. I've got the cameras, I've got all this stuff. We can gather all that footage, take it home, and we can edit it all, and we can do these videos, etc. But what I said to the attorney is, I picked up an iPad 2. I used to stream live on my iPhone, but the iPad 2 has a nice interface. I said, let's stream it live. I said, I'll go around the event, I'll stream it live, I'll be cordial and I'll say, hey, we're streaming this live. Here's a business card, it's going to be on this channel. Ustream.com forward slash 7 law, right? And so we stream it live. So that can get me a lot more activity, because if I'm streaming that live, what that means, I give them the business card, they don't really understand it, but they go there because I just took their picture, and what they find is Brandy for 7-ish Law, and they find all this video from the day that may be them and a, and a hundred other people, because when you're streaming, it's all done in real time. There's no post-production. So I can go be at that event for two hours, 
and I just fill the website with probably hundreds of faces that will now go there because they want to see themselves, and they see the branding for my law firm. All right, so there's so many things you can do with social media if you understand the tools and you understand how an integrated approach is going to, to work best for you. The final component of that is your metrics, and you have to be tracking metrics. Um, certainly Google Analytics, there's a, lot of, there's a lot of places where you can track metrics. We just actually um, got, got involved in, in a platform we can, where we can track re online reputation um, management and, and, and metrics. Because one of the things I found is there's so many places to track metrics. One of the things I'm looking for is a very integrated tool so that you don't have to go five, six, seven different places in order to do that. Okay, now, we talked about Facebook as your epicenter. And what I want to show you, and let me just see here, something happened yesterday, and again, one of the things that appeals to me about social media is that it's so quick, it requires quick, um, excuse me here, activity. There, um, there's a, I want to, let me just address something that I think is relevant at this point. I understand that someone this morning talked about ethics. Great point, because it's very relevant right here. You have to be very careful. Personally, I think that you are always going to be better if you run your social media program in-house. You do not want to delegate your voice. Don't, as attorneys, do not delegate your voice to an outside person. That's my recommendation. Okay? However, I know that there are firms, because I work with some of them, they're, not gonna, they're just not going to get it done. And so to a certain degree, we work with kind of a hybrid. All right? And what I do kind of with my system is what I found is I need the attorney, I need his voice. How do I get it quickly and efficiently? Because it, I used to say, can you write me a blog post? And I, that, you, might, you might as well forget that because that's going to happen maybe in three months if you're lucky. So we had to find another way. So here's what the other way was. Here's another tool for you. The Kodak is I-8. I think there's a Zy-10 now. Jerry, are you here? Yeah, that's is there a Zy-10 now? Yeah, it's next model. Okay, Zy-10's out. All right? I know the Zy-8 is like $125 on Amazon. Which, by the way, Jerry is the video guy, and he does some beautiful work. And he also knows how to get it out there. He knows how to distribute it. All right, so that's a tool. Would it be better to do it yourself? I think so. But if you're not going to get around to it, you could use somebody like Jerry. All right? Now, I'll tell you somebody else is Dale uh, at ConsultWebs. I've known Dale for years. And I happened to be looking at some of his stuff today, and I saw he had this Jumpstart program. And I thought, gosh, that looks great. It's very inexpensive. And it gives you some real visibility on the web. It's called the juice of your website. It's like $8.95. The reason I say this is ultimately, I believe you should do it yourself. I believe you should hire your own 16-year-old kid. And, you, you know, and he can't do it all because he doesn't have the maturity to know what to say. But he can take direction from you. So if you can do it in-house, best bet. But if you're not going to do that, then you need to have another solution because you just cannot avoid being there. If you're, it, it's like the point of entry is you have to have a strong social media presence. You just have to. So if you want people to help you, there are some good people in the industry. I've met a lot of them. PILMA is a great organization. There's, they have lots of resources too. So some of these places, you know, call them. You can call me anytime, you know, and, and I'll try to answer your questions or whatever. Here's something else that happened, and I think this is an interesting case study too. All right, about uh, three weeks ago, David Daggett, again, David, David's been one of my clients for, for years, so he, and he always says I can use him as an example, so I often do. All right, so David emails me late at night, 10 o'clock at night. He said, Cindy, something crazy is going on on my, what, on my Facebook page. He has a program in the schools called Safe Server for Online. And so he said, actually, let me go to, let me go to that page here. Let's see, so if we go over to, um, Safe server permanent. Okay. So he said, what? I don't know what's going on, but he said about 100 people is on my page in the last hour. He said, can you try and figure it out? Let's see, you know, can we reinforce it or whatever. So I thought that was just fascinating. So I got on his page and I started watching it. I could see the people liking it. And it was really an interesting study. And so I started looking and going and finding out where they were coming from because I knew he was doing all these things in the schools around prom season. And I narrowed it down, I was, I was pretty sure that it was a school called North Stokes High School. I wasn't completely sure, but I thought it was. So I thought, all right, well, let's see. And I went back and I looked. It had been almost two weeks earlier that he was at North Stokes High School, or maybe not quite that long. 
And there was a post that he had made like two weeks earlier, something about North Stokes High School. So I thought, all right, if this is North Stokes High School drill, let me write a post and let's see if people start liking it. So I went to his page and I just said another shout out, shout out to North Stokes High School. Thank you for your whatever. We were just trying to figure out where this was coming from because it was really cool whatever was happening. As soon as I put that up there, we started getting all these likes. People saying, you're great, you're great, you're great. So we still couldn't understand. The next day, David calls me and said, Cindy, this is what happened. He said, two weeks ago, I was at that school and I gave a presentation. And he said, we did part of our presentation was we talked about seatbelt safety and the importance of wearing seatbelts. That afternoon, two of the young boys got in the car and for the first time, they put their seatbelt on because they had just come out of this <coughs> conference, right? They had a very bad accident. Probably, people said they probably would have been killed if they didn't have their seatbelts on. They had their seatbelts on. And so what happened is everybody, people started hearing about that and, and they started going to Facebook. And that's where the lights came. Here's what I want you to understand about this. That campaign was driven by offline. It was a seminar in the school that David did. It did not start online. It started offline. But what really accelerated, it accelerated it and turned the Daggett Schuler firm into an absolute, absolute hero was Facebook. Because what happened is that was the place where they gathered to talk about what had happened. Parents and kids, lots of parents. Parents are the target audience. So see, that's a creative way to use social media without saying, call me, call me. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't go to social media and try and treat it like advertising. You'll get slammed. Don't, don't do that. You have to have a legitimate reason. All right, so Facebook accelerated that. Now, we have, we have some time, so what I'd like to do is show you a little bit of that video. Maybe we'll stop it. But here's what happened. So David, being proactive as he is, he takes the little flip video, which we had in mind, and he goes to the principal and the kid and another teacher. And he takes this little flip video out and he has them record a few things. And then he sends us all the footage and he says, can you do something with this? So yesterday we did. We put it out on Facebook um, last night, probably about 10 o'clock. I actually did it. And um, this morning, the, that video had 60 views. Not a lot, but it's just starting to pick up. And my guess is that video will now get passed around. So it's, it's, social media is a conduit to spread the word about what you're doing. And I, I don't think I finished up when I talked about the Kodak's I8. You know, it's, you can buy the $3,000 cameras and things like that, and if you know how to use that, terrific. Certainly they're gonna be better. But you can also use that little Kodak's I8 or Kodak's I8, $125, buy a tabletop tripod for about $15, buy a microphone for about $20, and a high-speed SDHC card. And for under $200, you have bought the equipment that David Daggett used in that first video I showed you. It's what he used. All right? So I'm going to show you just a little bit of the video of, the, of Toby. The Safe Sober Prom Night program really changed my views on um, being safe and just really being careful on prom night. Because you have a lot of stuff on your mind on that weekend, and it's really a big weekend, and anything can really happen. Hello, we're at North Stokes High School uh, with my longtime friend Ronnie Mendenhall, who's the principal at North Stokes High School, and I can't remember how long we've known each other. Oh, I'd say about 30 years. <laughs> 30 years. <laughs> <laughs> we both aged just a little. <laughs> Hey, listen, we've done a lot of programs in a lot of schools. You've recently had an incident where you can report to us a result. Can you tell us about that? Absolutely. Uh, Dave, about two weeks after your program, you brought a program to our school. And in that program, that it was emphasized about the importance of wearing a seatbelt. And we had two young men that later uh, in that month got in a car out on the highway, and they had a terrible accident. About the Monday after prom weekend, I wrecked my car. And normally, I don't wear a seatbelt. And if I wouldn't have had a seatbelt, I probably would have died. It totally destroyed my car. Uh, it cracked my engine block in, and it, like, uh, I don't know. I was just really sad about it. Was, was there another passenger with you? Yes, Dalton Lockhart, or, yeah, Dalton Lockhart was with me. 
and that's a buddy of yours. Yeah. And did uh, did he have his seatbelt on as well? Yeah, he put his seatbelt on. So. Both those boys were at the presentation that day, and both told me that they had never worn their seatbelts. And yet, that presentation came back to mind, and that one boy reached over, put his seatbelt on, he said, for the first time. And it wasn't 10 minutes after that, that vehicle ended up wrapped around a tree, and both of those boys walked away from it. They said, we remembered the program that Daggett and Shula had brought to North Stokes High School concerning wearing the seatbelt. They gave all the credit to wearing the seatbelt to the program that y'all brought to our school. And I understand that before uh, that Street Smart program that was put on by Safe Sober, you were a person that, that did not really put, you put on your seatbelt and use it, is that right? Yeah. And what was the main reason you, you didn't put your seatbelt on before that program? I just, I felt safe. Uh, I felt confident that I wasn't going to have an accident. And what did you learn through that program? That really, wearing your seatbelt if you do have an accident can really save your life and it makes a big difference. After talking to several of the people in the EMS department and from the hospital, we were told that they both probably would have been critically injured or killed in the accident if they had not been wearing their seatbelts. They all seemed really surprised that I didn't have any injuries really. Like they, they were really concerned that uh, I had something else wrong than just what I did have. We're here in the principal's office. Are you in trouble, Kana? With a young lady named Kana. She's a senior at North Stokes High School. She's been the ringleader for the Daggett Shuler Safe Silver Prom Night program. Can you tell us what the program has meant to you and to your school? Um, it's just meant me that a whole lot to help save people's lives and keep people safe and sober on prom night and to make sure that everybody is safe on prom night so that they can enjoy themselves and it's just it's meant a lot to me to help people. Well really whenever the program comes around like everybody's talking about it and everybody wants to get their t-shirt everybody wants to sign up for it and it's really like a big thing even though like this is a small school so really not a lot happens and it's really like one of the big events of the year and it's like one thing that everybody really remembers about prom night and everything, prom weekend. It's unbelievable and David I just want to say to you one more time to you and Griff how much y'all's program means to us and we are so thankful for y'all's program and it looks like to me it saved two of our lives here at North Stokes High School. We appreciate everything you do. Thank you Dave. Stay sober, do it right! Here's what I wanted you to understand is think about getting that word out. So if you're a firm and this happens, and, and by the way, I see I was wrong there. It didn't happen the same day you gave the presentation. It was later, maybe a couple weeks later. Um, but but if you if you have something like this happen, how do you get how would you get the word out on that? Social media will do it better than anything else. And and it did for this for this uh, specific situation. And it turned the Daggett Schuler firm into a local hero firm um, for a lot of people on Facebook because of what he did. Okay, this is one of my favorite stories. So I, you know, what you, I want you to understand that Facebook and social media are relational. People connect over relationships, and I encourage you to do a study, just a little experiment, and try different types of postings. Post facts, post statistics are usually very well liked. Then post something entertaining or something relational and see how much engagement you get. Now, I don't, this is about SpongeBob, and I certainly don't suggest that you go put something about SpongeBob on your firm Facebook page, but I want to show you this, because I'm out with my niece, she's five years old, and we're having a great time, and she, she says to me, uh, you're just like SpongeBob. And I thought, I don't think that's probably real good news, but let's see what that means. And I said, well, what do you mean, Kate? What do you mean by that? And she said, well, you're just funny like him. She said, but you're not square, and you don't live in a pineapple. And so I put that up on Facebook, and within 24 hours, 28 people engaged, 28 or 29 people engaged with that. They wrote comments and you know, funny things to my friends, and some people just liked it. The point being is when I write something about, um, we posted a new video, or, or you know, something that's more mundane, I don't usually get 29 people. Maybe you do it. If you do it, do a good job. Good job for you. But I don't usually get 29 people that reply to my posts in 20, 20, uh, 24 hours. So 
relational wins the game. And so think about how you can do that. I'll tell you something else that works really, really, really well on Facebook. It's called Facebook for a reason. Pictures. Now, again, if you take, if you go to David Daggett and he does um, the Safe Silver Problem program, but also in his firm, um, what happens is if you go, if you go and take a bunch of pictures and do that on a consistent basis, there's always something you can be taking pictures of. But if you put some pictures up in the term, in the, in a form of photo album. They get shared a lot. So pictures are a really good thing to get your Facebook page going. I encourage you to do that. The next thing is YouTube, and I think, and we're, you know, I want to make sure we stay on time here, but YouTube is really your hub for online video. And so even though pretty much everybody is doing YouTube, I want you to understand that even though YouTube is the hub, there's other places as well. And I want to show you another example of that because I think I told you about um, the safety lawyer. Okay, Gary Martin Hayes, and we just kind of started last week to brand him, and, and so he did um, the distracted driving, he's doing the distracted driving campaign with us, and that, you know, that is a great fit for the safety order. And so then what he did is he said, well, he did a couple videos, and again, my system is, I get my guys to take their little flip videos and things like that, they create the content, and they upload it to my Dropbox, and then we, then we post it, polish it, and add the music, and then front end and things like that. So that's what he did. And um, so yesterday, my guys, well, I, I wasn't here, my guys created the um, one of his videos he did on tornado safety tips because of the storm that just happened. And so I came in literally 10 minutes before, after I got here, I came in. And if you look, this is real time, I'm going to show you that because I'm going to pr push the search bar. So what he did is he did a little bit video about tornado safety tips, all right? Now that's Google video, page one. If you come down here, all right, this is my guy, Gary Martin Hayes. So he's on Google Video page one, and you can see it was 16 hours ago. So that, I mean, that you can do that kind of stuff. And what does it leverage on? Great content. Some people talked about content farms, and I'm glad that nobody's considering that kind of stuff anymore, because you know, great content is so important. There needs to be an authenticity in what you, to everything you do. And creating on great content is really the anchor of those programs. All right, Cindy, thanks so much. Can you remind everyone how we can connect with you? Uh, Cindy at cindyspeaker.com, or just go to my website, cindyspeaker.com, and thank you very much.